Hi guys, Ronnie here and welcome to the workshop. Today I'm going to talk about a bike build for a customer. But before we start anything regarding the build itself, I would like to talk you through the features of this frame set. Normally I don't do this, but this is something really, really special as you can see. So I decided to give this one a special shout out and a bit more detailed uh, overview. So the frame set that you're looking at right now is the S-Works Shiv Triathlon bike. Uh, the latest iteration of that, obviously, which has been released at Kona last year. But apart from the first 500 uh, runs or units of this bike, it wasn't really available commercially, but now it is and you can order one yourself, even though the wait is still pretty damn long. And I have to say, I have worked on many different triathlon and tantra bikes from the likes of Trek, Specialized, BMC, Cervelo, uh, Giant, Canyon, etc. And they're always a bit special compared to road bikes. But this one uh, is in a whole different league altogether. So the back portion of the frame looks a bit like the Venge on steroids. But the front end is what is really, really striking. So let's just come over here for a look. The first thing that you notice immediately after taking this bike out of the box is the folding handlebar. Now, this uh, is done to make the life of triathletes easier because they tend to travel a lot for their races. So the bar just easily falls down if you loosen up uh, two bolts, basically. Not more complicated than that. It's actually secured by same type or very similar type of wedge system like you would find in the seat post for example and what struck me most about this well front end is that all this part with the hinge for the base bar everything is molded in one piece of carbon fiber and it's uh it has to be super intricate and super complicated layer process uh, here you can see a bit of aluminum molded in, so this is the part when a headset uh, comes on. Obviously it's a hinge fork design, or at least uh, sort of, because uh, the fork itself is not a traditional hinge fork. If you look at it from the front, you see why. Uh, basically this is similarly to a downhill bike or a motorbike, it's like a triple crown fork has three blades uh, the plastic intersection in the middle which uh, holds your junction box and cables etc uh, you can also use a longer run of well not really cable because this bike is not compatible with mechanical drive trains but the disc brake holds mainly as this is clearly a disc brake bike obviously such a shape would really be impossible uh, with rim brakes as you can imagine uh, so you can store extra housing in there and that enables you to fold the bars like you can see here uh, then uh, the hoses enter the bar in these spots and the rest of the interface is pretty uh, straightforward and pretty standard the bar itself uh, is a super deep section, same as the air folds on the front. The whole front end looks super massive, so not the skinny climbing bike type, the exact opposite of the spectrum. Nothing you can really see on other bikes. And yes, there are perhaps uh, some other crazy designs, uh, mainly bean bikes, etc., which uh, allow or sorry, uh, use the allowances of the triathlon rules to create something really fast. This is one of them, but in that respect, it's not a beam bike. It has 
um, should I say, fairly traditional double triangle design. So in that sense, at least, uh, it's pretty standard. Then if you go further down the frame, here in this section, uh, you can actually see how thin the paint is. This uh, presumably is done to save weight. You can actually see the carbon wave, weave in there. And the same can be said about different sections of the frame here, for example. You can see uh, on the top tube, obviously you have a bento box. This being a triathlon bike, that's pretty much a standard feature. Uh, then there's a whole cavity uh, inside the down tube, which is a uh, pretty huge in itself obviously this is a large sized bike so it can't be really noodly uh, to be stiff enough for these larger riders if you look inside you can see that the brake hose and the drinking tube all have their separate uh, liner kind of inserts where you just push them in through the frame and they come out where they should or at least there's a theory. Uh, you can't put the bottle cage in there, but instead of that, you have this uh, rubber insert which goes here, and it's basically your one of your fuel cells where you can store your gels. Uh, further down the frame, a BB30 bottom bracket, as standard but specialized ceramic speed bearings in there. A pretty beefy area. Also the raised section here, like on the Speed Concept, many other time trial bikes, clear up the airflow around the crank. Uh, another modern feature of this frame is the fact that the front Mac hanger can be removed, super neat. And then you can uh, store a traditional bottle with its cage on the seat tube, if you have to. Uh, then going back, uh, the seat post actually is a lot, lot narrower in section uh, than many other time trial bikes or aero bikes even. Uh, and that's because it's aided or uh, the other fuel cell which stores your hydration is added on the back of that. So effectively it creates a huge shape. Uh, then going back, the super dropped seat stays which are pretty damn remarkable. Extremely, extremely low on the frame, presumably for aerodynamics, but also compliance. And a small rubber insert where the hydration box rests onto, and then in here goes the pipe, which then exits at your cockpit. Flat mount, uh, these brake mounts obviously with two axles, that's pretty standard. I'm talking about these modern bikes and actually the seat stays are reasonably thin but the chain stays are not as massive as on some of the other bikes that we see nowadays uh, okay so this is pretty much the details of the frame shaping also an interesting part is this little upward skink of the seat stays you can't really see this anywhere else or at least not where I, where I can recall and that's probably for aerodynamics as well and then uh, as with other time trial bikes slash triathlon bikes you do get a lot of extra stuff uh, that's integrated into the frame unlike a typical road bike so the big thing obviously is the fuel cell for the back it's right here and honestly I thought it would be made of plastic but actually it's carbon fiber as you can see this is what hoses the bladder and it doesn't really look that way in the pictures but it's super thin it's supposed to be one and a half liters Worth of storage here, that's good enough for most distances, apart from the longest ones. Uh, the bladder that actually goes in there is right here.
together with the included uh, kind of a cleaning barb and then we got some other accessories so this is the fuel cell which goes in the down tube this hold your gels nice tacky rubber you also get a roll of bar tape although I don't think we'll be using this one because I prefer grip tape for these builds and then we have the arm cups the i2 battery holder for the seat post again something that we'll not be using as we're going for ETAP then there are different inserts for the supplied computer mount which is pretty neat looks to be nicely adjustable then we have uh, the rubber covers for the hinges on the base bar goes right there then we have one more set of those and one more in fact so a couple of spares then the manual itself some small parts uh, each or the seat post binder nice uh, little rubber cover for the seat post and some other small hardware that I can't really identify now front neck hanger again something we're not going to use this is going to be one by setup uh, then some more hardware for the aero bar this is the lower bracket and then we have the clamp for the extensions extensions themselves made of carbon fiber quite rare when talking about the ones included with bikes at this price point uh, it's good then the seat post itself as you can see relatively skinny at first glance it looks quite similar to what you can find on a tarmac but actually it's different with a different shape going on more wedge uh, sharper point on the front the other extension there and then there is the fit kit which is pretty extensive and this is basically the collection of different spacers uh, this bike uses a mono spacer design so you can stack these up also really fine-tuned the position with this thin one these I presume are additional wedges for the base bar uh, I also guess that they allow for upward or downward tilt when fixed in place to further fine tune the setup on the base bar uh, then these are the studs uh, which mount uh, these risers in place I can't really identify these small parts by just looking at them you have to look at the manual what I'm really glad about is they also include uh, some hardware uh, well tilt hardware so you can tilt the pads up definitely we're going to use this one because it's a very useful feature now we have the manual to be honest I don't really know uh, how this setup works right now because it's very very different to what I've seen so far on other bikes and these are some more studs in case you use more stack more risers so there are quite there's quite a lot of options here if you look at it so we can really really fine-tune the setup and the position on this bike but well, in terms of stack and uh, and pad width okay so these are all the details of the pretty exclusive looking as well as Shiv triathlon bike we're going to do a full build video really really soon as uh, well basically as soon as all the parts arrive so if you want 
some proper buy porn happening then stay tuned for that it's all for today thanks for watching and see you next time